Rachel Noble, an associate professor with UNC's Institute of Marine Sciences, is studying our coastal water quality using so-called rapid water methods. Rapid water methods allow researchers like Noble to collect water samples at the beach, test the samples in a lab, and have results in an hour or two that determine if it's safe for beachgoers to swim. The rapid methods are the process of measuring the DNA in the water sample rather than measuring simply the growth of a bacterial colony on a plate. In particular, these rapid methods will be extremely important at beaches where you see tens and 20,000 people visiting the beach on a yearly basis. Um, the rapid methods will obviously, because they're able to provide answers as far as contaminated waters that day, they will permit us to protect public health much better than what we're able to do now with these with these 24 hour um, requirement for results. Noble says the best advice for beachgoers, especially after a large storm or hurricane, is to wait 48 to 72 hours to allow the pollutants to actually degrade in the water. In general, the beaches in North Carolina have excellent water quality. Um, but after a hurricane, the water that comes off of the land and off of parking lots, roadways, uh, driveways can, can t carry a range of contamination. Um, and so after a hurricane, it's generally probably a good rule of thumb to um, not permit people to swim within, say, 24 to 48 hours at least. But, but these, the rapid methods that we're working on will allow us to know exactly when beaches can actually be opened to protect public health. So currently what we do with the water samples from the beach is we bring them back to the lab, we filter them, and we process them using this machine, this quantitative PCR instrument. And essentially what Cepheid, the company, has done to design these machines is they've made them completely portable. So it is foreseeable that in the future we might be able to run, say, a simple water filtration out in the field using a car battery and be able to actually measure the E. coli or Enterococcus in the field using these machines. And they are actually the machines that are used by the military for much of the bioterrorism training in uh, foreign countries. One of the more potentially dangerous forms of bacteria to humans is the Vibrio bacteria. They thrive in hurricane conditions. Well, Vibrio um, bacteria are very interesting because they love warm water and they also um, have a very specific tolerance to salinity and to temperature that can be um, very specifically found in our estuaries of North Carolina. So especially in the summertime, whenever North Carolina's estuaries get warm, Vibrios are extremely numerous. They're, they're bacteria similar to E. coli. They grow very, very quickly. So they like these warm um, conditions that are uh, that occurred during hurricanes. Noble says bacterial concentrations remain high even after the hurricane has passed because the Vibrio can settle down to the bottom of the estuary. When another wind event comes through, the Vibrio can actually be resuspended and brought back into the water column and remain dangerous for periods of time. And so through the monitoring programs of Ferrymon and also the monitoring programs that we have of buoys actually in place in the New River estuary that permit us to measure salinity and temperature real time, we can effectively understand what the predicted concentration of Vibrio might be in the estuary at any time. 